Attention. The movie guys love movies. Any comments made about Disney making up a holiday just to help promote a new movie are purely for entertainment purposes only. Isn't that right, Christmas? <laughs> And now, a movie guy's joke explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I See, read the joke, but I, I didn't get it. Because Disney created Earth yeah. Day, so they keep making these movies every year. Now they've that. created Christmas. Why? Well, no, they created Christmas a long time ago just to promote all their movies. Oh. Now they're making Earth Day just to promote their movies. But the irony is, I wouldn't have known it was Earth Day except for the movie. Except for Disney Nature Bears yeah. coming up. It yeah. worked. Just like you wouldn't know it was Valentine's Day except for Hallmark. Except for the gaping wound in my heart. <laughs> That nope. too. Where nope. love used to be. <laughs> now, what holiday is the Country Bears come out for to, to celebrate? Labor Day. Labor Day. You know, Probably. they put out that movie like right after they shut down the ride. That's that sad. doesn't make any sense. Disney's Bears was a ride? Country Bears. The Country Bears. The Country Bears. Country Bears. Country Bears. Starred and Christopher Jamboree. Walken. And wasn't it water-based for some weird reason? It's a log flume, right? Yes. Uh-huh. They were like, fuck it, we have a log flume. They oh, by the way, can we curse on this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They have, uh, by the way, first in. sentence, <laughs> drop the F-bomb and then ask uh, the host, that's, you I know, can you curse here, right? Apologize later. <laughs> How funny would it be, based on the success of Pirates of the Caribbean, they they adapt log flume into like a Every two-hour ride. Movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> Indiana Jones Carver. has a log flume. <laughs> We've already, we already patented extremely long wait line the movie, right? Didn't oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so. <laughs> well, The Simpsons is a water ride for some bizarre reason, right? It's, no, it's I thought that was like the Roger Rabbit virtually. vibe. Oh, right, where you sort of sit in Universal. the car and it spins around. It's not a ride at any theme park until they spray you with water. Yeah. yeah. And they do it so early on now. I, this is old lady, cr- grumpy person talking now, but you put on the 3D glasses, you're sitting there, and this is going to be great. And then right out of the gate, something will happen and water will spray on you, and then you have to take your glasses off and wipe <laughs> oh, yeah. them off. It's Grandma, a dumb, Volpe. Uh, <laughs> that happens on Shrek. Now I just have it memorized when to put my hands in front of my face. I'm like, okay. Yeah, otherwise the water. you get blurry. D. In, my, yeah. in my day, ladies didn't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> now I get wet every two seconds. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Movie Showcast, everybody. Part of the vast Weird. and sprawling Movie Guys empire. <sighs> you can't expect to wield supreme executive power just because some watery taught threw a sword at you. You've reached ground zero for all things <laughs> movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with jokes, rants, sketches, characters, bits, special guests, and more as we broadcast from the Admirals Club, where pilots lobby to fly overhead. They don't stop making movies, so we don't they stop making comedy line. shows about movies, which means you can get a new show every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and of course, the themovieguys.net, absolutely free, and we encourage you to subscribe wherever possible, and if you do, still, no charge. <laughs> Basically, uh, search the movie it's free guys unless you subscribe. <laughs> right. Then it's five bucks. <laughs> yeah. Search the movie guys anywhere you like in the internet. We come up. We're also on one of the fastest growing internet radio stations out there, WBAD.net, where you can hear our show Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And if you go there or to the movie guys.net, you can catch reviews of the new Jim Jarmish film, Only Lovers Left Alive, mm. and movie guy Justin Bowler's review of Cujo from our Phoenix oh, Film nice. Festival screening. I'd never seen it. That was pretty cool. Oh. Hmm. Uh, your host, Wallace in attendance, you saw it. Right? Yeah. She was pretty good. Yeah, cool. She's a hoot. Uh, your hosts for the hardest working podcast on the airwaves include myself, Paul Preston, here with Karen Volpe, Lee Caius, and Adam Witt. And we are joined for the whole show by a guy who's been all over your TV and interwebs, hosting Dig Nation, the Totally Rad Show, and the screensavers for the likes of G4, Revision 3, and the Nerdist, Alex Albrecht. Is with us. Hey. Hey. What's Potty up? Mouth. Foul mouth, potty mouth, Swearing Alex up a storm. Albrecht. I know, it's been, it's, it's, live TV is not so great for me. <laughs> And forget not, as summer movie season approaches, we are your best source for previewing everything new that's opening in theaters, and this week is no different as we tell you what's the what with what's new, including The Other Woman, a new film that, according to the poster, stars airbrushed Leslie Mann, airbrushed Cameron Diaz, and Kate Upton, as well as Brick (laughs) Mansions, uh, uh, Paul Walker's last film. Too soon. The hell was that all about? Can you, you can't release any movie? You just can't say its a name. friendly reminder, Paul. <laughs> Understand. Just a <laughs> warning as we go forward. Just a warning. A, man a just preemptive died. too soon. Yeah, it's a fair preemptive. enough. And uh, later in the show, what if you could prove that the supernatural was merely a manifestation of what already exists in the mind? If we can cure one patient, we cure all mankind. <laughs> He sounds like an evil. Nothing he thing. said made sense. If you cure but one patient, you clear all mankind. And what if, what is it? Hauntings are just a manifestation of what's already. In that, none of this makes. Why sense. Why does that not make sense? 
I what couldn't find. What if you could prove that the supernatural was prove, merely like, a manifestation of what already you exists in the mind? Someone to explain that to me. <laughs> Essentially, it's saying uh, there's no such thing as ghosts. People be crazy. <laughs> bitches That's be right. wet. Bitches be, be wet. <laughs> Basically, it's it's. There's no haunting. Bitches just be crazy. They be crazy. Yeah. When here's here's how it is. Yo, we we take that out British of your thing. crazy head while and you're, you're alive. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now this I want to see this, this movie. This is based on the <laughs> the stuff where they would like drill holes in your head right? to be like, let it's, it out. It's just pressure, you know, from <laughs> Satan. Nothing a good bloodletting can yeah, do. Exactly. <laughs> Satan peer pressure is the worst. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. I really didn't want to kill her, but Satan was just like, "Come on," and <laughs> I went, made okay. me do it. Okay. All oh, right, uh, we're gonna open up your head. <laughs> I want to give a little shout out to Rotoflix.com. Oh yeah. If you're you listening to our that. show, we played the Rotoflix. Dot com. Uh, it's like fantasy football for movies. Oh, cool. And when we were on there during award season, too. you could pick all the movies you think would win awards, and you get mm-hmm. points when they do and when actors win or, or directors. And now they're doing it for summer movies. So we're going to start nice. up a league and tell you each week how we're doing on that. You predict box office results. We used to do that on uh, uh, TRS, uh, Totally Rad Show. We used to do a summer movie wager. There you yeah. go. We'd get yeah. together, we, us and the SlashFilm.com guys, we'd get together and be like, we're going to, mm. I suck. <laughs> yeah, the best part about this is I get to be, my team name is Tobin Spirit Guide, nice. and I am the manager, and I'm Bill Murray. So that's why it's the greatest you, game that's ever. It. You, you know what? You're I winning. Won. You won. <laughs> exactly. Bill Murray's going to be listening and go, oh, she's got some moxie. I'm going to come and guest on her, oh, on her in her uh, Dude, racket. We had his brother in here, and I almost had a heart attack. Which one? He has like seven. Joel. <laughs> the funny one. Uh, the funny one. They're all very funny. One and of those great lovely. impersonations of his brothers. Yeah. He was amazing. <laughs> and amazing. I was having a heart attack. But you got to find the one who isn't funny. Yeah. I don't know which Murray isn't funny. I, and it's the not one. his sister. She's apparently funny. Well, John's the, the one that kind of none. dropped out, right? Is he in anything now? Although I loved Moving Violations as a kid. Yes. I thought Moving Violations was the shit. Because if I couldn't get Bill Murray in something, I would absolutely take John doing a Bill Murray impersonation in Moving Violations. <laughs> but I think the Farleys are the same way, right? They all have one yeah. guy who's like an accountant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah but that's Mitch, the one. Mitch in, Farley, LLC. Who takes yeah. care of their money. That's yeah, it's the, it's the third Manning brother that's selling insurance out in Minnesota right. somewhere. <laughs> Ivan Ramey is the doctor. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we're on the verge of summer movies, and I just wanted to talk uh, quickly about... Uh, my growing excitement for them, and I got to tell you something. I went oh, to, yeah. uh, I went to, um, because well, first of all, I don't know if they're going to be any good, but I went to a Q and A with the Oscar-nominated makeup and hair folks, and it was Lone Ranger, Bad Grandpa, and Dallas Buyers Club, which eventually won. And they showed clips for all the movies. And this was down at the Samuel Goldwyn Theater. That's the mm-hmm. the one on on Wilshire, right, for the Academy. And so there it was in this huge theater, clips from Lone Ranger. And Lone Ranger's not really good. Not without lack of trying, as I've said here before, that it's not good. But there's something about off. those huge scenes, like this, this giant, it was a giant movie clip that was huge. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm ready for some Wh- movies. Bring on the giant movies that are trying. That's the Academy <laughs> Theater with the, the two Oscars on either side of the stage, right? Correct. That's the, that is the greatest sound and projection that exists on Earth. And I always forget, every time I go to a screening, which maybe once a year, someone will invite me, and I'll sit down and it will be for something I may not be that excited about. But as soon as that audio hits, and yeah. it, it could be like the 20th Century Fox logo, that boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, and you're like, ah, I'm feeling the my lungs rattling. And it's <laughs> Well, it amazing. also makes you feel so bad for people that live in like Des Moines, and they go yeah. to like their Cineplex Odeon, and you go like, you are not seeing movies the it, way you should be seeing movies. Because know. it used to you be. You don't know. It's in a mall, and it used to be like they expanded and they took out the um, Orange Julius, and now yeah. that's a theater. Exactly. Yeah. And you guys remember those theaters when we were kids that were like the the like smallest? It was like a shoebox, mm-hmm. and it was like the longest, yeah. thing, and like this little postage yes. stamp. Because they took one and they split it in half. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My they were like the, multiplexing. The theater I grew up walled off the balcony and built the second theater oh. up there. Oh my God. Mm. Adam's giving me the eyeball because yeah. we went to uh, Princess Theaters. Princess in Theaters Ohio. at Miami University, went to school <laughs> together. And I am not exaggerating when I tell you it was a large screen TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm so nostalgic oh, for it, yeah. sitting in that Princess Theater. Yeah. It's about the size of this garage, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's still theaters like that here. Like, I, that's where I saw um, uh, The Man in La Mancha was in, like, the Beverly Center. <gasps> the, yes, oh, yeah. there is that really like, shitty it's theater. It's really small. Oh, I don't even yeah. know if it's still there. We saw Jackass there, I think, Adam, with Larry. Did we? And is it was, we again, it was yeah. roughly the size of the garage yeah. door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is the screen. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I was about to say. It's funny you brought up the Beverly Center because uh, the, the great thing about seeing movies in Los Angeles in, as opposed to Des Moines, nothing against Des Moines, but there is no chance that an executive from that movie will walk into any theater in Des Moines. There is a chance that that 
executive will walk into any theater in LA except the Beverly Center. <laughs> that's really that's really funny. Plus you never know. I mean that's the thing that's so cool about LA. Like I went and saw I hadn't seen Pacific Rim yet and so I was like, oh, "I'll go to the Arc Light. It'll be like, and, you know, I'll go at like noon on a Monday, you know what I mean? Cuz I'm just like I'll just go in, sneak in." And I bumped into um Mark Webb, the oh, director, director of, of Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man mm. Amazing Spider-Man 2 and, and 500 Days of Summer, which is one of my favorite movies. And uh, but it's like one of those things. He ended up being in my theater. There was like four people, and it was like me and Mark Webb <laughs> watching Pacific Rim. <laughs> the weirdest. Great thing. movie, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it was a movie. Did ah, Mark Webb enjoy the movie? Uh, I seemed so. I didn't. We didn't really <laughs> chat after I entered. I mean, I did say hey because I was like, you know, directors usually you're not you as likely to get bumped into and recognized, and yeah. somebody who you know, it's it's nice. So I did a blurt. I would check Although, in with him. As soon as the movie's over, just turn to Mark Webb and go, well? Well? <laughs> robots? <laughs> Although I did this stupid thing. I hate that when, like, because, you know, I'm, I'm a fan, but I'm not, like, it's not like I'm sweating because I see the guy. You know what I mean? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, screw it. I'm just going to go. And I had just come back from Comic-Con, saw the panel, um, the director's panel with him, um, uh, 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 Alfonso Cuaron, and who the hell was the other? The th- third person on that panel somebody crazy and amazing now somebody some, one of the ones some we awesome get person. confused right <clears throat> yeah I was yeah. gonna say you say Corona, Corona, and I'm like hey, interrupt I know I love, I love that it's probably like some guy you know it's like Joss Whedon or somebody but it Babel wasn't but, uh, so two? I had just seen him so of course his who he was was sort of fresh in my mind and I went up and I was like are you Mark Webb and he was like yeah and I go ah, I'm such a huge fan of 50 First Dates Oh. I know, and then I go. I mean, I mean, five hundred days of summer. Uh, I mean, I like fifty first dates, <laughs> but I know you didn't direct it. And I was like, I'm just gonna go. That uh, is. Why did I do this? A huge difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other day I was both at good U- movies. You both good movies. The other, <laughs> Adam not- Sandler peeks around from the corner. <laughs> what? Yeah. The other day I was at Universal and I uh, had valeted my p- car, and Paul and I were working on some project or something, and so I was alone, and there was a little boy playing with something and a man with him, and I looked over at the man. And it was the guy that Paul has done a bunch of work with on um, that General Hospital. General Hospital. So it's Sonny, the guy who plays Sonny. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to say hi to him. This will be great. I'll be cool because I'm very cool. Mm. And so I leaned over and I said, hey, my husband's worked with you a bunch. He goes, oh, that's really nice. That's great. Well, what's he done? I said, well, he always plays your bodyguard. And he's like, oh, I'm like, Polly. And he goes, oh, my God, Polly, that's so cool. So we have this nice interaction. I went, all right, well, have a nice weekend. I turn around. Everything went great. He thought I was no. cool. It went great. I walked into a trash can. Oh, <laughs> oh that's amazing. And that's it made amazing. a lot of noise. And so perfect. <laughs> it was horrible. I He's... love that you didn't subtly run no. into the trash can. <laughs> Knock the piece of metal off, yeah. the cling. He just pretended he didn't notice. You know why? Because he's a great actor. He's a good actor. <laughs> Oh, here I stole your water. There you go. Oh, that that's my water. That's yours now. Yeah, Cox. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Star Cox. That's, that's literally what it says on it. Cox. They broke up with the Arquette Corporation. Uh, hey, I grew up in Virginia. I know Cox. Cox? This is from the Phoenix Film Festival. Plug, because we were there and they gave this to us. Yes, Cox and, and stars. I like the sippy cup you guys gave me. <laughs> yes, it's it's for the film goers. They didn't want them to spill apparently. Oh, one more thing uh, that we did over the weekend. We went to WonderCon. Yes, we mm. did. Now, we didn't go on Saturday. Sadly, our schedules wouldn't allow it because that's when they previewed, finally, <laughs> footage of Godzilla where you can see Godzilla, I guess, in all oh. of his glory, apparently. They showed cool. that. And mm. they did Fox and Warner Brothers did all this stuff. And Luke Besson was there to preview uh, Lucy, the new film with Scarlett yeah. Johansson, which that I saw a trailer great. for before Captain America. And anytime you get Luke Besson out of France, sure. you should go. And I <laughs> fucked up and I didn't go. So that's a shame. Um, Bottom line. I got to Swamp Thing uh, animated series on bootlegs. So. <laughs> yeah, because it was, it was a success. As you it said, was a success. It was a success. More bootleg there than at Comic Con in San Diego, right? Well, now I am hearing from yes, our guest. Yes, he was corrected. He was corrected prior to this that I just did not find the bootleg DVDs in San Diego, which was my big disappointment. This is half the reason I go to Comic Con is bootleg DVDs and, and back in the day VHS. But uh, turns out they were at San Diego. I just didn't find them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was dude, I, go, that, I was telling him I got like uh, I got this DVD for a friend of mine that's Dalek porn. So it was like, what? I'm so wow. yeah. curious. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. I was too, and I watched it, and it's basically what it says. And the best is, it was look porn, bad acting. We can, I mean, come sure, on. Sure. And to be honest, Famously. I think there does need to be somebody who goes in there and really shakes things up. Like the Coen brothers used to direct porn just to kind of keep their chops up. You know what I mean? Shut up. Yeah, Never I uh, love that. Wait, this <clears> happened. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, uh, at least I believe it was either the Coen Brothers or the Farley Brothers, but I think it's the, it's <laughs> well, much more well, it's much more interesting. Wait, if it's the, the Coen Farrelly Brothers or the Farley? Uh, no, what, you know what? I believe Maybe Kevin the Farley, Farley Brothers. brothers. Yeah, yeah. It's Kevin. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, no. So the whole thing is there's literally one woman in the porn that keeps looking at the camera. But I mean, huh. not like once, like is doing her lines to camera oh. <laughs> and nobody else is doing it. Oh. So it's like, everybody's like, oh my God, the Daleks are coming. And she's like, yes, the Daleks are coming. <laughs> <laughs> and like smiling and like looking how she's saying, I mean, like clearly mugging for the camera. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Well, she's going to show her right. vagina to the camera, right? So that's a big she did. Well, yeah, so. Her time she did, and her vagina <laughs> looked right at the camera. <laughs> I'm trying to look up who that third director was because I feel like an I asshole that I didn't. Too, who is what is Dalek? What is what is a Dalek? Dalek? Am is I Doctor oh, so who? Dalek is Doctor Who, one of the big yeah, that like weird like the it's, grating, the like moving grate. It's a trash can, right? It's sort oh. of a trash can. Okay, Upside down I've trash seen can. That. I've seen what Used that is. to be a trash can. Maybe they make. I it think I ran else into now. a Dalek after I met Sunny. There you go. So. Did it want at, to at bang? the uh, Phoenix Film Fest? We did a thing called Beat the Geek, <laughs> and I thought we were gonna have this big movie trivia contest. Turns out they threw in TV and yeah, we were and video games too. One of the first questions was about Doctor Who, and I just went, "We're out." Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> tough. Jamie had been. If Jamie there. were there. Yeah, I actually was on as a guest. Beat the Geeks. The television show, Yes. Yeah. Oh. What? I love Edgar it. Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright! I knew it was somebody that I was like, he's awesome, and I don't know why I'm forgetting I've seen about Edgar it. Wright at Arclight. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's a good, he's when a they, good dude. When he's they on a plane uh, on. When they, when they, uh, they showed, they were premiering, not, it wasn't the world premiere, but it was midnight when you could first see the world's end. And it was him mm. and Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. I told you about this. I it was, was supposed like an to epic be there gathering. I can't remember why yeah, I went somewhere else to see it when we were supposed to go there. Matt Stone and... Uh, oh, Trey Parker, Trey Parker. Yeah, yeah, it was like all Quentin Tarantino, right? Tarantino was there. <laughs> yeah, it was wow. and Bill what Hader. Exciting. It was like a crazy wow. collection of people all hanging out in the Arc Light Cafe. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, so Another let's great get thing to about Los Angeles. It's been a half an hour and we're on page right. two. And that oh, happened in Des Moines. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> let's all get right. to the uh, movie previews here. So. Uh oh, sorry. Des Moines. Wait a second, you know what that means? It means when we got started, too. It means we've made an error and we need to make amends. See, this happens. I think it's important to admit when we've messed up because I'm sure uh, many of you get all your movie news from us. <laughs> but we have uh, made a mistake, so we're going to throw things over to Lean Out to fill us in on this week's Retractions. Retractions! <laughs> yes, that's right, Paul. As we're often heard to exclaim here on The Movie Guys, first and foremost, we are journalists. Mm -hmm. And we <laughs> pride ourselves on strict adherence to journalistic principles like accuracy of information of sure but unfortunately there are those rare occasions when we do rare. slip up uh for example <laughs> last week you paul were yeah. heard to say this me oh i'm fact. excited yes. to hear this uh -oh. the trailer announcer says it's a story all families share because every family goes through that rite of passage where they drag their children up snow-covered mountains <laughs> and swim through rivers to a Mumford & Sons soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we all now realize, the yes. soundtrack to the Disney Nature Bears trailer is indeed that of Philip Phillips uh. and his popular song, Home. Uh, uh, so uh. we would like to apologize to both Mr. Phillips and Mr. Mumford and, of course, the sons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> for, the it is sons. a right to bring for kids in. Good night, <laughs> Papa Mumford. But so are you sure, that was are you sure about that, Lee? Uh, sure about what? About just what song was the soundtrack, the Disney Nature Bears trailer? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Paul, I'm quite sure. If you go ahead and play the two songs back to back, I'm sure you'll see that I'm right about this. All right, let's see. This will be the Philip Phillips and Mumford. Because I'm going to make this place your home. Okay. Now, which one? Is that That's the Mumford Stop one, right? I, I don't that's know. Mumford and Sons. What? And this is home. This is Wait. Home. <coughs> I think that was. I think it was what? home, then Mumford, then home again. I know that if I were a bear, I would like both songs. Okay, well, I, I think I know what next week's retraction is going to be. So fair okay. enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just for fun, here they are both together. Because I'm gonna make Okay, great. So now we got the retractions out of the I'm way. I'm sorry, Let's sorry, Paul. There, there actually is is another error. More? We, yeah, that, that we need possible? to address. And, and it's probably because I wasn't here. That's yes, right. uh, this one was actually made by Keep by you, track. Adam. What? Um, oh, Adam. I, when yes. is the last time I made a mistake? Last week, and according <laughs> and, and ironically, uh, <laughs> maybe 20 minutes ago. We'll find out next week. <laughs> the whole thing about no bootlegs at Comic Con. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> 
And this one, your your error actually occur, uh, occurred during Disney's Nature's Bears as well. Oh, um, man, that's trouble. So during Damn that movie. preview, we played a drop from Werner Herzog's documentary, Grizzly Man. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the documentary about the guy who went out and lived with the bears. Now, that drop was from a scene where Werner was listening to the tape mm -hmm. of Timothy Treadwell being mauled to death <laughs> by a bear. I think I know where you're going <laughs> with this. Now, you're saying that we should retract that drop, that we made an error in playing it. it Maybe been bad taste. That, that was clearly insensitive and appropriate. Fair enough. I think we might... Uh, no, no. Oh, Paul, Paul that, that's not the error. That, that drop was freaking hilarious. No, the <laughs> error was what, was what Adam said after it? the drop. So here, play the tape. Okay. We'll pause here for a clip that I'll put in in post. Ah, please, put it in. Truly, you must never listen to this. Ah, ah, that was awesome. Oh, you see, must never watch this. Yeah, see, see what Adam meant to uh, say yeah, was you it. must never... Li what Adam said was you must never listen to this, right? But what he should have said was you must never watch this. No, it's the other way around. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he shouldn't say, he was supposed to say, yes. you must never watch this. Well, what he said yeah. was, you should never listen to this. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, 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 this was not an error. I was referring to a haunted house, too. What I meant to say was, you, the listener, must never see a haunted house, too. Oh, oh that makes much more sense. I agree. See, I go. absolutely agree. All right, well, then I guess agree. I'm a little over for two. Okay, all right. All right. We, we didn't make any mistakes last week. Everything was fine. The show was great. Nothing to apologize for. All Moving right. on. Nothing, I'm sorry, Paul, nothing what? to apologize for? No. Really? Please play the third clip, Paul. Uh -oh. right. 2009, wow. she did to Suck It, and then in 2009 <laughs> later, she did We Suck It Too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you talk about movies that get sequeled a lot. I mean, Neighbor Affair 8, you know, My Girlfriend Squirts 9. Uh, that's where we end up with the career of a Haunted House 2 star, Kirsty Hill. I remember yeah. this, who, before entering the legitimate movie world, mm -hmm. engaged in over 400 pornographic films, all listed on IMDb. So what exactly, what's the problem with that? Well, Karen, yes. clearly we misled our audience into oh. thinking that Kirsty Hill appeared in all eight Neighbor Affair movies and oh. in every one of the films of the My Girlfriend Squirts <laughs> franchise. Oh. Okay, so in reality, she yes. only appeared in the ninth sequel to My Girlfriend uh. Squirts and the eighth sequel to Neighborhood Neighbor Affair. Now, I, for one, am a little embarrassed by oh. this and that, you know, I, I think we're a little re remiss in our research. I mean, who are we, Dan Rather? <laughs> Well, <laughs> she did do We Suck 2 and We Suck 3. Karen? Yeah. Please. Oh. Okay, all I'm saying is that I think we did this woman a great disservice in misrepresenting her work, and I, for one, think we owe it to her to have her come here on our show, sit next to me here in the Admirals Club, <laughs> so her voice can be heard, allowing her both, allowing both our audience and ourselves the opportunity to get to know her as an actress and as a person. Lee, wait a second. Is this one of those ploys that you have where you finally can live out your fantasy to have a meeting of a real-life porn star right here in the studio next to you? Retraction! All right, enough of you. So, so you're saying she's the Kane Hodder of the Girlfriend Squirts <laughs> series. Anybody get that joke? Is that no. how somebody is that, in the audience said that a lady you arrived to the series? <laughs> I like that you stuck up for her. That was very nice. Is that he, he I did a lot late? of research on this, Karen. Yeah, I, Kane Hodder was in like seven, eight, and nine. Anyway. I watched. I watched all seven <laughs> of the previous eight just to make sure she wasn't in them. <laughs> Maybe. You know what it's Amazing. called? Research. research. It's research, yeah. yeah. We appreciate that, Lee. I like the Dan Rather joke. <laughs> I like that. I almost got it out, too. I <laughs> Let's get to our first film of the day. Uh, We're going to preview films today? Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, not till tomorrow, I think. Uh, can't boil a rabbit? Well, perhaps you need to team up to get revenge on a philandering man in The Other Woman. Lee, let's talk about it. Here we go. I'm in love. I'm in love. Nice. With the other woman. This is a movie about a guy who drives an Aston Martin and cheats on his wife with two other women. Well, so far the premise sounds plausible. <laughs> <laughs> then, when the three women all find out what this rich scumbag is up to, they decide to team up to exact revenge on this three-timing cheater. Well, now you just lost me there. See, statistically speaking, one out of three women will put up with a guy who's cheating on her if he drives an Aston Martin. <laughs> Well, you don't That's think a, a plumber statistic. would be able to pull off a, a wife and three mistresses? I think we all know the answer to that, Paul, don't we? Okay, I was wrong. Listen. Uh, Karen, <laughs> oh. do you want to preview this I'm with I'm getting me? the boot. Sure. <laughs> Here we go. Audible. Go on an audible. <laughs> with the other one. Going to the bench. <laughs> to the... Pretend you pulled a hammy and sit down. Go ahead and put a, a lead weight on your head. And just swing it around a little bit and get ready to get back in. <laughs> Where's the stationary bike? I'll be yeah, right there. Stay, stay warmed up, honey. 
Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton take the place of Goldie Hawn, Diane Keaton, and Bette Midler. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. In this movie that's like First Wives Club without the marriage. <laughs> the other woman joins the other guys, the other sister, and love and other drugs, and a list of other movies with other in the title. Honestly, that is all the press release said. <laughs> it's true. That's it. And the That's other woman, Cameron Diaz and Leslie Mann, are brought together not only by casting directors, <laughs> but also by fate, as they form a bond over the respective cheating boyfriend and husband. Mann does what she does best as an actress, playing the wife who gets drunk and pukes on herself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That last one might have been The Exorcist. Oh, okay. oh my God. The other two were from... Either that or Top Gun. <laughs> it sounded like a flyby and somebody vomiting. Yeah. <laughs> the, no female, uh, the female <laughs> bonding continues when Diaz and Mans, Carly and Kate meet up with the girl that everyone would cheat on everyone with, Kate Upton, who plays Amber. Uh, of course she does. So there are three women who could be the other woman. Confused? Well, here to not help is the fact that all of them have the same bleached blonde hair. This guy's definitely got a type. In the trailer, Kate Upton is introduced jiggling her way along the beach in Bo Derek slow motion. This shot both seals the humor of the movie as well as it does the male demographic. In Kate Upton's interview on IMDb.com, she says this about the storyline. Every woman goes through this where they need friends' support. First of all, let's have that guy who cheated on Kate Upton on the show. <laughs> let's see if he actually exists. Secondly, do most women actually meet the other woman their guy is sleeping with and then become instant friends? It's a movie, isn't it? Oh, that's where they would do that. <laughs> Upton also got attention from a different interview in which she expressed concern about her breasts being too big. I'm pretty sure most guys are going to look past all that and look directly at all that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, who would cheat on all these women? Why, you'd have to be a Danish model to have some strange on the side of Kate Upton. <laughs> And so it is with Carly's husband, Mark King, played by Nicki Minaj. Or wait, it's wait. A, what's a similar name? Nicoli Coster Waldau, who's a European actor I've never heard of, therefore I can only assume he's on Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it might be a red wedding. I've never seen the show, but I'm told that's how you squeeze in a reference to it. <laughs> in another twist in this increasingly science fiction sounding movie, the trio of attractive women find out there's yet another woman. That, what? What? That Mark is cheating on with that. Screep. <laughs> <laughs> What a dick, right? How does he get away with this in the Clearly. age of Instagram <laughs> and YouTube and phone photos Thank and you. right? Social media. Social media stuff. And attention, anyway. everyone. Hollywood has apparently run out of actresses. <gasps> oh no! Because Nicki Minaj is in this movie, <laughs> playing Cameron Diaz's assistant. Because Nicki let's, Minaj. Let's be honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she's throwing phones at people. Let's be honest. Three what? white women still can't bring the pain like one sister. Right. What are these three going to do? Hide this guy's best ties? Cancel his tea time at the country club? This looks like a superior chick flick that knows what joke goes and what holds. Yeah, there you go. That's the very nice. Vagina reference at the end there. Yeah. Very nice. Take it home. And it looked it right at the camera. Right at the camera. Right at the camera, vagina. <laughs> Legs up, exterminate. By the way, by the way uh, at the top of that preview, uh, I, somebody write down and uh, say a uh, patent pending for the name Rich Scumbag. That's just a good name for a guy. Rich. <laughs> Hi, Rich Scumbag. scumbag. <laughs> nice to meet you. He was in Suck It too, Rich right? Scumba. <laughs> he was. Rich, Rich Scumbaj. Scumbaji. Rich Scumbaji. Hey, Rich Scumbaji. Hey, Rich Scumbaji. Could be Italian. He lives next to the Could bag of douches. Could be Italian. Rich <laughs> bag of douches. <laughs> the bag of douches. So, so Steve bag of douches. <laughs> Steve bag of douche. Mike bag of douche. Rich Scumbaji. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It's... They got in a fight with the bag of dicks. <laughs> a bag of dicks. <laughs> bag of dicks. You got hit in the face with the bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> the bag of dicks are going to add an extension under their house. <laughs> Why what a bag this, of dicks? It's just screaming uh, an old Dan Aykroyd sketch, isn't it? Oh. oh I could totally see Fred him Fred Garvin. That. <coughs> right? Yep. Rich Scooby. Bill Brasky. Honest to God. Right? And uh, Alex, that's how we uh, discuss uh, the great. other woman. That was that's great. That movie. <laughs> That was great. We oh, we are going sick. to do a poll sometime where we place bets like when we watch the when we watch the trailers like we watch them all at the top of the month and then we kind of rate the shows as we go. But we always wanted to add, before we ever write a line yeah. to say what is the amount of time before we actually get off topic and stop discussing <laughs> the movie <laughs> and then afterwards like long after like then tally it up and see you know which one. I, I will say this. 
Uh, this movie actually looks pretty funny. It does look good. Yeah. It does look funny, though I am sad by the poster because I think that Leslie Mann is beautiful and now she just looks like Kate Upton, which is fine, but she's Leslie Mann. But, Why do you have to do that to her But is poster? Kate Upton complaining that she got her boobs too big? Because those aren't hers, right? Those are she, her boobs. She accidentally bought the wrong size. She's is this complaining. The complaint? She's <laughs> complaining that they naturally it's are, hard for her to run on the beach. Yes. When naturally. everybody just says, could you please run on, on the, the beach? beach. <laughs> <laughs> could you just jump yeah. on this trampoline? So All where right. are my lines in this one? Oh, oh, you, you just, just run, run on, on the beach? The beach. <laughs> and we'll do the rest. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we'll put your lines in. That's, in where, that's where Leslie Mann's like, here, Leslie, here's your script. It's 50 pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she runs. <laughs> Talk to yeah. Brooklyn Decker. She'll tell you how to read and go, get through a movie. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. Now, I have to say that this seems like the, a premise that should have been done, but I don't know if it has. Like, the the, the one, uh, the, it starts with that, that funny scene. She comes to the uh, Cameron Diaz comes dressed as a nurse in, like, super sexy nurse yeah. outfit, and then Leslie Mann answers the door like she thought he was going to be. So that's an awkward interaction. But then they... When she thinks the husband's uh, got one, got one, I, I, the, the two the, of them are uh, against yeah, the, the guy and find out there's a third, yeah. and they find out there's a third. I mean, I was like, that's a pretty clever way to have like a, and they do kind of have like slumber party scenes where they're all laughing and stuff, and it's like, well, that's kind of a cool way to bring women together. But I don't think I've seen it before, even though it feels like I don't like think it exists. In, in that's re- why you haven't seen it. No, before. I know. That's, <laughs> well, but mo- your movies don't exist either. Three divorced women don't get together in <laughs> no, first wives. What was first, either. What was first wives a- club about? First Wives Club was about all three of them going through be- bitter divorces and getting together and deciding that but they were going to get revenge on their, on individual. their, on their individual, individual men. Husband. But they were Not all the going to help them. Like all, and the, that makes basically sense. they team up. I could see but that But then happening. they start a business. Oh, They're like, let's get up. cards and start a small oh. business. And then that makes sense. They that's what have it wine. is. Slot solution. No, that, um, that's... Maybe. Not to third act business making. Not to derail <laughs> things, but I'm just... What? I just need to ask Adam. I'm trying to talk about the movie. Would you like to know when you made your last mistake? <laughs> what did I say? Uh, she never had real boobs. No, she comes as a plumber, not a nurse. Oh, oh, is there a plumber? You yeah, watched, she's she's there. You watch it very closely. <laughs> that is well, what we're finding. Because twenty out. seconds before the beach running, there's a plumber. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I, all I remember. I went for the sexiest. Thanks, Mr. Skin. I went for the sexiest thing you could come dressed as. She <laughs> comes dressed as a plumber. There's Thanks, nothing Mr. sexy about yeah. that. Which By is, the way, clips of Kate Upton running on the beach are why I hate Mr. Skin because that's the worst <laughs> thing to find on Mr. Skin. You're like, I'm not here for partial nudity. Right, we're here. We want to see I pay fourteen ninety five a month. <laughs> To see it all, Mr. Skin. This isn't Mr. Sorta Skin. Right. Mr. PG. Mr. Side Mr. Boob. PG. No Mr. Side, side Boob. boob. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. I do. I do. Oh, yes. That, uh, they do bounce very naturally. If you've watched that trailer a few I think times, you're right. you, you, I think you're it's right. weird that you would say that yeah. they're implants. They bounce. I think they're real. No, you're right. Naturally. I was I'm a connoisseur. Me- and I was being funny. Real. I was being funny. They are definitely uh, original factory install. Yeah, you are so stupid. We'll have to have retractions at the end of the show. You're not, not, we're not next week. <laughs> yeah. He's just, you know what? I'm, I'm just building the list now. Why wait? Why wait? Why do the research? Pretty soon you're going to have a buzzer. that just crack. I'm with See, you. That's not true. We should get Kate Upton in here to explain yeah. herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have her in here than the porn girl. Is that okay with everybody? Absolutely. Yes. I don't think anybody okay. would feel different. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I do feel bad that they seem to be making apologies for this movie because I saw Cameron Diaz on uh, Graham Norton. Is that the oh, name of the guy? Yeah, yeah. And then somebody else was plugging it. And the first things out of their mouth is it's not a man hating movie. Well, I, um, I didn't, you know, I understand well, why they're getting they that might, guff. But, but that could be because there's probably some somewhere there's internet uproar. Right. Yeah, which is Somewhere unfair. on the internet there's uproar. Right. Somebody's, right. Somebody's, somebody's pissed just, on the internet? I know. <laughs> I know. You'd think that they would just be a place of roses and unicorns. Acceptance and uh, yeah. love. And, and, the right. fact that you can say anything you want and no one knows it's you, you'd think you'd be able to say nice things to everyone. Right, because mm-hmm. that's what you want to do anonymously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're nice. That's funny when people bring up like some obscure opinion. They're like, "Can you hear all these people that are pissed about this?" And you're like, "Who? Like, like? Because you can take the one guy who wrote the blog and then publish that and say, "Ah, oh, there's all kinds of uproar about yeah, this exactly. or whatever." Yeah. And like, it sounds like everybody's excited for someone to have that opinion, but they had to dig and find that person, and it's it's never to you know, validate my shithead uh, thoughts on something. Yeah, it's not yeah. hundreds of people. It's <laughs> yeah. like one yeah, dumb one ass. guy and then ev- and then all the guys that have the same thought. I'm assuming they're all guys that are against this I'm movie. I'm thinking because it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of And it's the internet. They're probably like 12-year-old boys. They're like, Meh. The only question is Nick Cassavetes. Is he going to direct a chick flick? Well, I mean, I don't. I can't get a beat on Nick. Well, he directed The Notebook. That's the thing. He's kind of oh, all over the place. Him? The yeah, Notebook is great. He did Alpha Dog and he did My, My Brother's Keeper. Is that what it's called? Yeah, With like uh, Cameron Diaz? 
And and sister's Keeper. Last one I saw was a Sister's Keeper. Travolta. My, tra- my so Trapper Keeper. My Trapper Keeper. <laughs> my Trapper Keeper. <laughs> oh my God. The so, other Sister's Keeper. Uh, somewhere Fox News is like <laughs> tying this into like why we can't have Hillary Clinton as a <laughs> right. president. Because look at how bitchy the women get. The other Sister's Keeper. Look at those boobs keeper. bounce. We, we wouldn't get anything done if we were allowed to see this. <laughs> yeah, the, the epitome uh, of someone's pissed on the internet. Adam, yeah, right. yeah. The other Sister's Keeper is one of those people that yeah. um, makes sure that. Uh, she's safe when she goes out in public. And, and wears her wears helmet. Her helmet. Her helmet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on to movie right. number two here of the last big uh, weekend before summer. And if you've been wondering if parkour is still a thing, Ooh. well, there's a movie here to remind you. It's called Brick Mansions. <laughs> Punch, rock, grind. <laughs> Fuck, plank chest. <laughs> Stump, junkman. <laughs> Dirk, hard pack. Rip, steak face. Slate, slab rock. <laughs> Broad, bone meal. Adam? <laughs> I'll take that introduction. If you thought parkour was a fad that had passed and that the general public lost interest in, or if you thought at the very least parkour wasn't anything you could possibly use to stylize an entire movie anymore, well, Brick Mansions is here to show you how right you are on both counts. Brick Mansions takes place in a dystopian Detroit. (laughs) Wait, I repeat myself. (laughs) Detroit! (laughs) But actually, you can't, they they can't escape that description. Dystopian. My favorite kind of topian. Producers love it. Detroitopian. Are, are they that excited to bring money to an impoverished community and that unenthusiastic to paint? This film is clearly in competition with the RoboCop remake for 2014's best promotional video by the Detroit Bureau of Tourism. <laughs> the alternate future is really just an excuse for some great broken future production design, as the mansions of the title are a dozen blocks worth of high-rises abandoned by General Motors presidents of the past, now filled with running, jumping, and stabbing minions, And a whole Dante's junkie assassin hellscape is walled in. Two men enter, one man leaves. Brick Mansions. (laughs) Looks like it could do for parkour what the Raid Redemption did for killing 100 men armed only with a knife and nightstick. Mm. Like the Raid, a valiant cop must fight off an endless supply of angry, shooty, stabby guys. (laughs) (laughs) As he makes his way to the end of Barter Town. Who ran Barter Town? That cop is played by the valiant cop's valiant cop, Paul Walker, of whom we've made many jokes over the years, but all joking about Paul Walker stopped last November when he died in a horrific car crash in Malibu. Also killed in the crash was the driver of the car, who I'm told also wasn't an actor. (laughs) Paul Paul Walker teams up with an unnecessarily (laughs) French sidekick, David Bell, the founder of parkour, a guy who can be credited with every action sequence in 2007 and that episode of The Office. That is amazing. That is amazing. Video game The Movie also stars uh, Urza. Ezra? No, it's like Riza. Was that? Uh, Riza. Why can't he name himself Pizza? 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 Pizza. Pizza, pizza? Anyway, he's a, he's in it. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Hey. Oh my god! <laughs> Little Caesars in it. Oh. <laughs> Remember these creepy movie trailer moments. All from Insidious 2. <laughs> now, while Brick Mansions looks just like action, 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 the trailer does take a few moments to be creepy as well. When the night has come. Detective. Your father. Who's a real Detective. Hero. That's Cash. He's talking to Jack. They've made Stand By Me creepy, these uh, ad guys. Will they stop at nothing? <laughs> no. Singer-songwriters will not. (laughs) (laughs) Make you want to see a body. We're not sure how long this movie is, but from the trailer, we're guessing if you speed up the slow motion jumps and running, it'd be about 25 minutes. (laughs) So, how does it end? Does Paul Walker live? (laughs) Too soon. Shit, my bad. That's that's Rick Manson. So proud. Track that joke. I could have used it too soon after my joke too, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Retractions. It was Valencia. Retractions. Valencia. Oh, good Valencia. Lord, what was Valencia? Weird Paul Walker. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Valencia, yeah. Valencia wasn't Malibu. Wasn't Malibu, yeah. No. Oh, you're right. No, it was up north. Where's there, yeah. Valencia? Up north. It's right next to Malibu. Mountain? Santa Clarita. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many places in California in that just all sound like they're right next to each other. Right. I know. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? San Palos Verdes. <clears throat> Where the hell is that? San oh, it's Gabriel. It's near Valencia and San Gabriel uh, and San, and Gabriel. San Bruno and San, San Bruno. Monica. Yeah. In all seriousness, I am not going to see this movie, Maybe. but oh. yes. this actually looks like the movie that might have made Paul Walker a little more legitimate. Because all he's ever done was Fast and Furious, right? He never really did anything else. Oh, no, he did a whole poop ton of movies. Did he? Yeah, like Vehicle 19 is play- in the rotation Like I said, right just now. the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> 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 well, that's I'm actually... Sorry, was it called Vehicle 19? He was, he there wasn't... was a movie called Vehicle 19. There was, there was, he's done a fire? bunch. Didn't he do a wasn't Man Wasn't he in fire? Blue Crush or something? Well, he was in Into the Blue. And he was oh, in into the blue. Uh, That's the Takers, one. but I mean nothing approached. Pleasantville is probably the only thing that really yeah. approached. Like he okay, the he was the like yeah. love interest of the teen of. Uh, what's he was it about? really good in that. Yeah, too. he was great. Oh, was a great yeah. movie. He looked like he could pull this off. He looked like he could take the place of Chris Pine very easily. <gasps> he had his chance to be Chris Pine before Chris Pine. If that Chris true? Pine yeah, could come true. in and clean up that quickly, then Paul Walker wasn't doing his job. <laughs> 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 nothing against nothing against the dead. Yeah, <laughs> just just my luck is what launched Chris Pine. So <laughs> we always talk about this when one of these movies comes out. You know, like these guys are just jumping all over hell. We stub a toe and like we we can't. We yeah. have to sit down. It is amazing. Like, how do these guys here. parkour all over the place? If I stand up too fast, things get spinny. Yeah, it's called parkour. <laughs> <laughs> you ever parkour? I have parkour. Get yeah. out. Yeah, I went to a parkour gym. Oh sweet. I mean, we, did, we did a lot it of looks that fun. stuff. It's super fun. It's super fun. It's a lot of, but I was, I mean, I was the kid that was like, I'm climbing that wall. And then my friends and I, when we got older, would get drunk and go, I'm climbing that wall. <laughs> and Whenever. so we've had a lot of like, uh, and then once parkour came out, it was just like, oh yeah, booze and parkour. <laughs> Welcome when, everything. When we were in college, Paul and his friend Mike, they would, they didn't know what they were doing and there was no such thing as parkour back then we didn't know the name for it so he and his friend would just run at a cement wall and yeah. run up it as far as they could until they were perpendicular to it and then just fall on the ground <laughs> that's half I know par- what you're half of at. that is parkour if we flip that <laughs> right? we flip that over onto our feet yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. i wish that were happening today cuz you two idiots would go parkour and run and fall down do you have to yell the word parkour yes <laughs> michael scott does i Other, hope so otherwise people just assume you're vandalizing stuff or breaking into a house no, you just need to get your one friend that's really not into it and he just yells parkour at, you, at you as you're doing it because it's really weird if you yell it but if somebody else goes parkour when you do something cool well you know you, totally you, awesome. you guys have that doggy gate in your kitchen yeah. i can't get over that I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm falling into your living room all the time <laughs> I don't know parkour. how these guys get do a parkour. Yeah. Maybe you're not saying parkour. And you I'm should not. try it now. Oh, okay. Next Maybe time you go over that, like, say parkour. Yeah, it's like Shazam. <laughs> Are you, just take it, it one leg at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're trying to go hop it, yeah, you're going to run into some trouble. You know, it's got to be the, the worst day as like a parkour master is the first day that you realize you can't do it anymore. Like you've just, that, you're, you're, you're trying yeah. to go through that small happen. space and you just hit your head or whatever. And you're like, yeah. that's it. That's well, it. But <laughs> if you think about it, Jackie Chan was doing parkour, I mean, mm-hmm. way yeah. before the Frenchies, Mick Frencherson. <laughs> you know what I mean? And showing you when he did, can't get through the little thing. He's like, I go through the little thing. And then he hits his head and he was like, I uh, love that. Oh, yeah, I always love how. <laughs> he'd scale a wall he'd do yeah. like two yeah. feet and exactly. then he'd put his butt on the wall and he'd be yep. over <laughs> yep yeah. what happened to the now for some reason this is a thing that can happen now in entertainment you can be in Wu-Tang Clan mm-hmm. such as the RZA whose mm-hmm. name we goofed a sure. director as well and now mm-hmm. he's like a ma- martial arts guy this is like his second or third martial arts movie how, do, how does how do you well they're big... they're named after martial arts yeah. the Wu-Tang is, oh, is, that... is an old martial arts series but they can all do it like why didn't I well, know that when I they were know. rapping <laughs> like I wish they were fighting each other and rapping <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, Suddenly, he, he's he directed the movie, the, the fist, Man with the Iron Fist. Man with the Iron yes, Fist, yeah. and I think he's in it, and I think they trained the shit out of him. He's, he's definitely probably, in it. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's. But you never uh, hear about Ghost Face Killer kicking ass. But, though. but it's not like no, well, there was Ghost Samurai or whatever that was with uh, Ghost Dog. Yeah, Ghost Way of Dog? the Samurai. Way of the Samurai. Well, that That's had no Wu Tang. He no, no. He is fat. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah. He is fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, whatever happened to the Jizza? The Wu Tang Clan. Right, Wu Tang Clan. You're Jizza, the genius. That's right. And you're Rizza, aka Bobby Digital. Yeah, you know it's hip hop, yo. You know it's hip hop. And you're a Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Groundhog Day Ghost Busting Ass Murray. Who you gonna call? I know that. Just don't tell anybody. 
a great scene from Coffee and Cigarettes think, with uh, both the Rizza and the Jizza. Well, I think the Jizza was starring with Kirsty Hall in uh, yeah, I was gonna say. We uh, Suck It 2, uh, right? Suck It 2 and 3. And 3, yeah. yeah. Starring the Jizza. The Jizza the the made several appearances in every one of her films, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got one more movie opening this weekend, whether you know it or not. Uh, let's play a clip. Here we go. She's here. <laughs> Believe it or not, that extraordinarily loud clip is for a movie called The Quiet Ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds weird until you realize that once a year, Lionsgate's charitable outreach arm allows the National Association for Hearing Loss to name one of their movies. Lee, let's talk about it. A university professor and his team of students conduct an experiment on a young woman. Hey now, I like where this is going. <laughs> And then they uncover terrifying, dark, and unexpected forces in the process. Ew, oh, bummer. great. So it's a horror movie. Well, I guess you can never have too many of those. Oh, wait. Yes, you can. But that's not going to stop Hollywood from making them. <laughs> to say that something happens in this movie seems like it would be an overstatement. But that doesn't stop Wikipedia <laughs> using almost 900 words to explain the plot of this. Let's call it a movie. But this movie features all of your favorite horror cliches, like... Hmm. Chopping? Creepy girl. She's here. Scars on skin. Scary music sting. Lower voice from a child. <laughs> Plus stuff coming out of the stomach through the throat at no extra cost. <laughs> <laughs> and if you order now, you'll receive the Basset Hound of sound effects. Rub, 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 rub. But what's it? But what is it really about? The quiet ones <laughs> tells the tale of the sort of college class I never ended up in. Why is that the quietest sound effect? <laughs> Why is the fart the one we can barely? Oh, uh, because that's one of the quiet ones. <laughs> oh, thank you. I thank would you, hate guys. to hear one of the loud ones. Yes. Uh, we are children. That is, I love that is it. A supremely oh, immature I laugh I just let out. <laughs> Paul, that was the most amazing. Paul, Paul, it. Go ahead and say the quiet ones and play that again. I think, that, oh, I think the reason Where was did so you quiet. get that? That was the most amazing. Was that it's such a subtle part. by you guys? No, that was no. a real one, Paul. I found it on YouTube. <laughs> amazing. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. The quiet ones. If the quiet. smell is any indication, I don't think that was a sound effect. Yeah. No. <laughs> it was also that beat, that pregnant pause. <laughs> yeah, when you hear you hear that a clip is coming. Yeah, go back and see. Go back you gotta hit it again. again. We'll, we'll but what's it really that. about? The quiet ones. <laughs> <laughs> Tells and you can kind of hear him <laughs> lifting a leg, right? He gets like a step, step, you gotta get lift. Up the, room. the video for this, by the way, is like a guy's crotch with a with like a towel over it. Yes, <laughs> he's just—it's so gross. <laughs> It's like he was like, wait, 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 honey, 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 get the camera. Quick, 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 Oh my god, I'm four years old still. Oh, I love it. Ah, this cool. movie tells the tale of the sort of college class I never ended up in. The one that skips black poetry and instead <laughs> decides to create a poltergeist in the classroom. <laughs> what, what could, could possibly, possibly go, go right? right? The ghost goes batshit and throws things and possesses one of them. It's the disaster they courted. The terrible execution of this horrible idea is meticulously <laughs> documented on film. Why? I don't know. Maybe for future generations to learn not to create poltergeists in their drawing rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Cook stars as Christina Ricci playing Wednesday Adams in the role of Jane Harper. Perfect. You like found footage movies? Well, let me tell you something. You haven't found footage until you found it on 16 millimeter film in the basement. Wait a minute. Are you sure this isn't a porn? But there can't be found footage. This was filmed in the late 60s. They didn't have footage back then, did they? Shh. Now, the footage was originally lost during a period we call the Great Hiding, in which all <laughs> in which all home movies of paranormal activities were hidden to never be found again. But like so many others, it was found due to improper hiding. Now, that's why listeners of the Movie Guys choose Unfound Footage Media Storage Services, our newest sponsor. 
Remember that time that the haunted Mini Cooper drove that Scottish family and their 8mm camera into the swamp? Of course you don't, because it was hidden by unfound footage media storage services, the only paranormal footage shelter that offers a lifetime guarantee that your footage will stay lost forever. It's good sure. to have them on board. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's a found footage movie, but the footage found was shot on 16mm film and nobody could figure out how to download it into their <laughs> iPhone. So the rest of the movie plays out like a traditional horror movie. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's it. Very nice. Quiet ones. The quiet one. The quiet one. <laughs> There's your cue. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> That's just how they wanted us to cover it, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, when, I saw, when I read the script and I saw that fart joke, I just thought, how did I miss that angle on writing any jokes for this? Thank you. Uh, I love it. <laughs> classic. Oh, God. Classic. It's, like, God st- it's literally staring you right in the nose. I just <laughs> love that you could classify that there was the great finding in 2008. <laughs> finding. The great hiding. The Where great all f- of the things fa- hidden in the great hiding were found <laughs> in the great finding of 2008. <laughs> And slowly divvied out across the, f- the world. The finding. That is the Someday name of that a will be a uh, non-scary horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> I found it. The finding. <laughs> what? It's just <laughs> Easter. <laughs> Guys, don't go see it. It's just Easter. Yeah. <laughs> just Disney trying to Someday invent Someday we'll Easter. give that a big production value. The, uh, the, the, the stupid company that uh, finds that hides your footage for you. <laughs> oh, God. That would be amazing. Yeah. If you don't want it found, call us. Don't yeah. come here. Yeah, I do like that. Now, where are my socks? <laughs> <laughs> this movie starts Jared Harris. You know Jared Harris? He's, like the, he's like the only name in it, but he's pretty cool. Played yeah, Moriarty, Moriarty and, and uh, yeah. there's a Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Bo- really? a Shadow bunch of stuff. Game of Shadow? No, no, yeah, no. Game of Shadows. That oh, guy. You mean the TV show? No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. The yeah. second Sherlock Holmes. Correct. Not Sherlock. Like, no. People are adorable. He's a Mad Man. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's in Mad Men. No, yeah, you he's won't. like that guy in everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, he's awesome. Richard really? Harris, that's great lineage. Man called horse. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, oh, and he's already like 50-something. Man, Richard Harris was old. Yep. Now he's dead. <laughs> he was in the first Harry Brought Potter. Brought the mood down. Right? Uh, too soon. And then they uh, to swap uh, him out. Too, too soon. Oh, yeah, too soon for <laughs> Richard <laughs> Harris. Paul Walker on, Paul. on the other side. <laughs> Fine with that. Get out of the way. <laughs> you know, the thing is, nobody liked Paul Walker until he died. I mean, the day after he died. Now, I mean, again, Who are look, you? look, nothing. Ag- I know, look, nothing Hate against mail. the dead. Nothing against please, the dead. Please, of course, it's <laughs> extremely <laughs> tragic that we lost Paul or anybody. <laughs> Okay. I love that you've backpedaled so far that you're like, death is horrible, death people. Death is horrible. Look, I, I want to put go on record and saying I'm sad I don't about everybody it. dying. I don't want my, anyone in my family Nobody to go through it. I don't want to go through it. Darfur. Of course, it's terrible for Paul death. Walker. But yeah. literally, no nobody death. was singing his praises the day before. So you can't backpedal and then go right back to what you were talking about. <laughs> Oh, but he can. No, oh, you haven't seen it. the show, have you? <laughs> 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 now, the yeah. ridiculous uh, story of The Quiet Ones is yes. said to be inspired by actual <laughs> events, which could mean a shopping list or a go-kart race, who knows. But most of the time, it means almost nothing. This description seems to fall somewhere between based on a true story and made up about true events on the Oliver Stone scale. They say that someone, somewhere, at some time, was inspired by true events. But they never tell you what those true events were. So we did some research and found that this week's movies were all actually inspired by true events. And that those moments of inspiration were actually caught on tape. So let's, in fact, go to the tape for the first one and find out how this film was inspired. Here we go. I got it. College students and a poltergeist. Well, there you go. Who knew? Well, a lot of good thoughts come to you in the shot. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I think the events would have to have something to do with the plot your story is eventually no, no. about. No. But I guess uh, that's no. how loose no. the terminology the is. The event of discovering it is an event. Don't she bet. was living a true event when she yeah. got the idea. That you makes know, sense. It, when you've ever used a loofah, you'll know that it reminds you of Poltergeist. <laughs> These ad guys or something. You like use it right, you can see God. Let's, let's play another. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Let's play another tape here and listen in on another true event that inspired a movie. I got it! Parkour in Detroit! <laughs> see, that's interesting. <laughs> and again, well, what that guy was huh. doing, totally different from no. what Brick Mansions but ended up being. Inspired him. You never know where inspiration yeah, I mean, there are no lawns in Detroit, as I know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have one more movie this week. Let's listen into this one. <laughs> I got it. Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton. Leslie Mann is married to a rich douchebag who's having an affair with Cameron Diaz. Diaz discovered her boyfriend is married. The wife and the girlfriend team up only to find out he's cheating with a third woman. 
Kate Upton! Oh yeah, Kate Upton! Oh yeah! <laughs> Sometimes you find out too much, right? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and that was found footage from him last night. <laughs> so, mm, okay. perfect. I think also I, in the shower. In the shower. <laughs> oh but we're overlooking. Lord. At least that one made sense. It did. <laughs> it did. Oh, it did make sense. That was the one that actually yeah. was like, mm, based on a true story. Yeah. yeah. That is forward movement. <laughs> Jerking off there. to Kate Upton. I got a movie for you. <laughs> I got a movie for you. <clears throat> All right, now enough of that. And really, right. uh, and, and that's an inauspicious introduction to our guest. <laughs> So therefore, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody quiet down, say my name, and then play the fart noise. And we'll call it a day. All right, All right Alex. Uh, Alex Albrecht, uh, let me ask you the question I ask everybody who comes on our show. What's Shoot. your favorite movie of all time? It's funny. There are so many movies that I put that I could easily think of as one of my favorites. And so it's, it was, it was really tough. I, I, I picked two. I know yeah, that doesn't really yeah. make sense, but no. one of them I had to go for was Star Wars. Yeah. All right. Yeah, right. that, that kind of ends up on, on that, like, that, and like, that's why I kind of said it. right, and that's why I was because I was like, man, well, I mean, it was like it changed my life. Yeah. It was I was five, you know, whatever, blah Everybody blah blah did, blah. Yeah. Uh, so I went. I'm going Ghostbusters. Yeah, you, <laughs> I know, you are right. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it was great. That you, it was great that you were wearing the shirt when you walked in because I was you. like, oh, she's gonna be happy. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, the greatest movie. Mm. Every line is funny. It's all quotable. And they still do things with supernatural and their special effects. They yep. manage to get the comedy right yep. and do something that makes you think. Yeah, and they don't do comedy in the way like there are a lot of like action comedies like R.I.P.D. Mm. Right, but it's mostly right. being smartasses and exactly. then just plot. Right? Exactly, exactly. Mm. Whereas this, with this, it's like scene. And, and some of the scary stuff is funny in the way that the yeah. scary stuff is being portrayed. It's not just like. One liner at the scary stuff that just looks like scary stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? But well, then there's like subtle stuff where um, Dana Barrett is in her house and she has Peter Venkman come over and he goes into the kitchen and he looks at the counter and he just kind of has that pokey thing. <laughs> he goes, Are these the eggs? And she seriously is like, Yes, those are the eggs because those <laughs> fucked her up. But it's so great because I would be freaked out too if the eggs yeah. just started boiling. And if the I was Peter Vinkman, I'd be like, what? Fucking eggs? Eggs? Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> and I'd prod him with my thingy. And I'd prod him with a thingy. And then he goes, look at all the junk food. And it's funny again. He's yeah. just trying to get laid. That I He mastered that whole idea of little effort and he totally wins. Yeah. yeah. He yeah, did yeah, nothing yeah. to win in stripes. Total winner at the end. He was a total Yeah, that was slack. like his thing. I'm so glad that he had that sort of like <clears throat> renaissance comeback of Rushmore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that just blew my mind. I mean, another great one. I mean, the, the problem is there's so many great movies and so many movies that all throughout my life you have these different periods of time in your life where a movie impacts you so much that it's hard to be like, right now I'm going to say that this is my favorite movie Well, of that's kind of how we often get yeah. it answered. Like right now... <laughs> You know, yeah. Godfather, or whatever, but yeah, 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 yeah. This week, so right now it's those two. The thing about Ghostbusters, we might we've talked about this movie ad nauseum because it is Karen's favorite. But I think I don't know how they managed to get a timeless look to that film. It's not stuck yeah. in the eighties. You could look at Footloose, that was made the same year. Looks like nineteen eighty four. Yeah, Ghostbusters outside of the the you know, some shaky effects looks timeless. I don't know how they. Well, did they it. spend most of the time in a gray jumpsuit, which is kind of you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they don't they, they don't outfits, use phones yeah. often. But right, you know, their that's jackets true. and their suits and stuff look kind of just a sort of studious tweed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know nothing. You know, and even Dana tweedy. Barrett's sort of like played down. Yeah, like she's not like the sort of like high fashion person. Because like with Footloose, they had to be like, well, we got to make him look cool for the kids. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well then his socks go up and his hair goes. <laughs> Over. I mean, it's like <laughs> Put doing the 80s thing. Jacket. Right, exactly. <laughs> the so thing that cool. kids like today, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when you go off the rails. There is this one guy. Now I'm going to ask Alex this because he's oh, a very well. astute viewer. There's one moment <laughs> Ghostbusters I have a problem with, and I'm sad to say this. It's an extra, and he's uh, very tall and skinny, and he's got red hair, and it's very 80s cut, and it's bright red, and it's off to one side. It's when the Ghostbusters go. And that was Conan O'Brien, by the way. It looks like Conan <laughs> O'Brien. <laughs> Only I know it's not him because this guy is a complete pain in my ass. So they pull up with the Ecto uh, Ecto One, mm-hmm. and it's when they're going to finally go and fight um, the bad forces. And mm-hmm. so there's the kind of earthquake, and the car goes down, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's quiet, and you hear someone go, "There they are," which I love. And then they come out, and then this ever the crowd goes crazy, and they cut to the crowd, and it's this tall guy. And he's got his hand up in the air, and he goes, Ghostbusters, all right! And I want to kill him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So annoying. And once you see him, you can't unsee yeah, it's him. it's the 80s plant. Yeah. It's so every, horrible. He's suddenly in about seven Background. or eight other shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You would once, die. I was at my uh, friend's I was at my friend's house, 
and he had this like giant sort of like screwed up painting big giant painting of sort of New York City scape it was weird but it was like it didn't finish on the edges I was like what the hell and he's an art uh, prop guy you know what I mean so I was like, well, what the hell is this thing about? And it had like this giant gaping hole in the middle. And he goes, oh, that's one of the background paintings from Ghostbusters. Oh. And it was the actual background painting oh, the from the scene with the buildings where the first thing explodes off the top of the building. Mm -hmm. And I was like, are you kidding me? That and it was just awesome. sitting in his thing. And he was like, yeah, I got to touch it up because it's like got a little messed up. And I was like, don't leave Wait, it no, messed up. Perfect. Leave it mess up. It oh my great. god, that'd be in my living room. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, yeah. be art. I love how you I, jumped registers. You couldn't help me. Like, well, when it's, <laughs> when it's, it's Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, you got to yeah. make sure that they understand you, and they had only do that when you're high. Yeah, that's my that's, right. that's my Raiders register. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What the that? Yeah. Don't tear out her hamburger Ra hamlet. Raiders thing? and Raiders <laughs> was another one that's like that's so high on that list. Ever. I mean, I had the whip. I, you know what I mean? Like. It's By the way, to, to to help help people yeah. uh, with deciding, you know, like we always say, what's your favorite movie? And you're mm. right, and that is that is a complex thing. I have I have taken the phrase uh, the greatest movie ever, just that phrase, and that is now just a label I can put on almost anything on a daily basis. <clears throat> Good. It's very helpful. Just like some days where I see a movie and I'm like, that is the greatest movie ever. Now that's not literally the greatest movie ever, but I don't feel like putting it with the rest. I just want to label it right now the greatest movie ever. You know, it's a little moment. bit like saying. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. You know what I mean? Like, it's, oh my God, the worst thing just happened. It's a label. Yeah, yeah. My it's car actual... didn't open when I tried to open it. And it's like, <laughs> it's not really the worst thing, but yeah. right then in that moment, that is the worst thing that's happening yep. to you. Things you label. say, that's but you don't really label. mean, I love you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, Lee. Wait, what? <laughs> going under the hood. You don't want to go under the hood of this guy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Don't pick it, it'll bleed. Now, what's, so, what's, yes, you answered that question correctly. Good, I love it. <laughs> we talked about some of the things you've been involved in when we introduced you at the top of the show. Yes, it's so, very it's, it's astute. Explain <laughs> me how Dignation started. Uh, I uh, will try to make this short uh, because it's not a short, semi short story. I actually, so I, was, I moved to LA to be an actor uh, back when I was doing that. Um and I you don't, oh, wait. I need to run up right there. So you don't set out for any <laughs> roles anymore. You're uh, merely a nah. personality type. Now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, or, or behind the camera. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of just sort of what I'm doing. I mean, I'll do things for friends. You know what I mean? Like I'll be in projects that they do where they're like, "We want you to be the weird guy that comes in with a grenade." And yeah, you like, know what's Done. funny is I'm trying to be an actor and I still do weird things with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes, that is being an actor. You got out of the weird <laughs> things. So I was, so I was in it and I was sort of doing the acting, the, the whole grind. I got. A bunch of commercials and was just like okay i'm doing the grind and then um i was i, I have a computer science degree from college and uh, also did comedy improv all throughout college and still do it today um and not physic well yeah you know, i guess you'd call this improv anyway uh, <laughs> no we scripted all of your yeah. comments yeah, 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 yeah. all of your comments just tell us about dignation of right show. there yeah, the uh so so i uh loved this tv this network called Tech TV back in the day. It was on my cable box when I moved to LA. I was like, oh my God, it's a, it's a network for nerds like me. This is great. And this is before nerd was cool and before yep. Hardwick and all those, you know what I mean? When you actually got beat up. For yeah, being exactly. That. When yeah. I was really actually doing computer work. You get not laid like being for nostalgic. Being a nerd now. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got married for being a nerd now. Uh, so anyway, so I love this TV station, but it was based in, in San Francisco and they had this hour long um, live uh, week, daily television show called The Screensavers. I loved it. And it was like, oh, this is great. At a wedding, was l literally at a wedding, bumped into a woman who was a producer at Tech TV in oh, L.A. Whoa. <clears throat> and I was like, I, I've always wanted to host on te the Tech TV. I'm a computer science guy. I do improv. I'm like, this would be great. But I'm never moving to San Francisco because I want to be an actor, and that would be the end of my acting career. And she goes, that's funny. We just got bought by Comcast. We're moving everybody down to Los Angeles, Whoa. and one of the hosts of the Screensavers, the hour-long live television show, is not coming. Oh. And we're currently casting for a new role. You'd be perfect. So well, I was like, yes, I would. Let's do it. So I went in, auditioned, did a whole bunch of like rounds of auditions and stuff, and got the job. So <clears throat> it was a little tough because it was like my manager was like, dude, you can't. I mean, I got like was the next day after I I was like the first day at work and he was like you got to go to Fox for like a you know sitcom audition to be a series regular on a sitcom and I was like I I'm at work hosting which is cool performing but I can't go do that and of course there's no way I would have got it probably mm -hmm. show probably never even got made but uh so I did 3 months of every day you know 
I would get into the office oh, at like eight, awesome. work on what we were going right. to do. We'd do run throughs and stuff. And then it was live at four. Oh. Like the camera's point, we had an audience, a live studio audience. And I was like, here we go. It was like prompter, IFB, like all the oh. new the stuff that I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and so then, and the guy that I co-hosted with is a guy named Kevin Rose. While I was there and we were working on that, um, he created a website called dig.com, D-I-G-G.com, mm-hmm. which is yeah. brought social news to the interwebs back in 2005 so or 2004 sorry oh, i didn't know that he was a, a founder of that. oh yeah oh, he created cool. it i mean and literally i remember walking into work and being like hey what's going on kevin he was like i've got an idea for a website and i was like uh-huh and then he goes <laughs> it's like a pile of stories and if you like a story it like goes up a level and then people can see the top stories that all the people are and it's called dig because you're like digging the story up the pile and i was like yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Flash two cover of Business Week and five hundred million dollar company, and all this. I was like, I'm a fucking asshole for not like being like, that's great. Let's do it together. High five. Uh, <clears throat> great idea, partner. Exactly. <laughs> so then that show got canceled with the whole big. Or no, l- let me phrase that. That show did not get canceled. That show became Attack of the Show on G4. Oh. Um. So, but what happened was Comcast, m- m- like. Uh, G4 made it to the end of their agreement contractually and basically fired half the people that moved down from San Francisco oh, no. after like three months. Ugh. I was one of the people that got fired. Per- perfectly fine for me. I'm just an actor who got a three month gig and yeah. a month of severance pay. What? Ooh, and all that experience. Oh, yeah. So awesome. So, uh, flash to the next summer. By the time the next summer came around, we had launched a company called Revision 3, which was an internet startup that did. You helped launch Revision 3? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was one of the, like, there was That's four awesome. or five of us. Um, <clears throat> because we came, I came in right as the the four guys that sort of started it were Kevin and uh, Prager and Ron and Dan Heward. Just want to make sure I get all those people out there. And um, Ed, Edgar Wright. I and think, Edgar right? Wright, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they created they created uh, Revision Three and started a show. And then when iTunes announced that they were going to have podcasting built into iTunes, which mm-hmm. of course it, w- it hadn't been yet, uh, I got a call from Kevin. Um, like at you know 11 o'clock at night and I'm in bed I see the phone I'm like Ugh, god what does he want go to sleep 8 a.m. the next day wake up two phone call from Kevin I'm like oh god what's in his crawl so I answer it and he was like iTunes has announced they're putting podcasting into iTunes we need to do a podcast I want it to be about the top stories on dig let's do it and that was oh, that was cool. Tuesday and we shot the first episode of dig nation on Friday and I was like sure come over we'll shoot it whatever blah blah I mean, so like, great. literally the first episode of Dig Nation starts with the Rock Lobster song from Family Guy. Because we were just like, let's just run, let's just play that. <laughs> we're like, okay. <laughs> and then we were like, kind of nervous is the wrong term, but we were just like, let's just get drunk while we're doing this because this is going to be weird. We had only worked together on this TV show that was like live and had this big fun. And we were like, oh, God, I don't know. So I was like, let's just go get beer and just get really fucked up. And I was like, oh, great. And then that became seven and a half years of my life so cool. every it's week to hear how these awesome. kind of things start you know like <laughs> well and we combination out, of, of it's based on um inspired by true events it was <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it was me in the shower i was right? like wait what should i do with this uh, <laughs> i was indicating to my junk mm. uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that is a bunch of like groundbreaking stuff that yeah, yeah we lucked in. out yeah we lucked out because i think it was like the perfect opportunity we were video um and and when podcasting came out, there was only like a handful of video yeah. shows. So it was like us, uh, Tiki Bar TV, Ask a Ninja, um, oh, yeah. Shot and Fritz Weekly I Bit. Did, yeah. I'm sorry, that was my group. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, What's the bit? Uh, what was a show that was like a two person a boy and a girl, something and a girl? Oh, Keith show? and the girl. Keith and the girl. That was audio. Yeah. Oh, that was audio. Yeah. Okay. So a lot. They so, were one of the first. But we lucked out because oh man, we went to believe me, we like. We, you know, month three, we went to Ontario, California to the podcast expo and we're meeting people who were like, I have a woodworking podcast. And I was like, what the, this is awesome. Like podcast, cause I, they also at the time. So Leo Laporte was, um, used to host the screensaver. So he was the guy that I replaced basically. I think it was actually Patrick Norton, but so the, he had started doing this week in tech before uh itunes announced the podcasting thing so my buddies that i all knew from the screen like <clears throat> all the guys that started revision three those four guys were all people that we knew at at tech tv who all got fired so they were just like let's start doing this thing and they had a <laughs> show called system which i think was their first show but dignation when i came in like six months after they had started the company 
it was this big thing because we we just said well we'll just use your bandwidth you know, because back in the day that was a thing you guys <laughs> you kids are lucky because back in the day yeah. it would cost it you to come I mean, by. and if you became successful i mean like i we i got to meet um a buddy of mine named liam lynch who had this uh video show crazy video this guy's one of those like genius guys crazy video show i'll show you clips afterwards and it's like mind-blowing stuff uh but he became really successful and it was a video show and he was he was paying thousands of dollars a month just to put his show out there because so many people were downloading it oh, because yeah. you have to pay when somebody downloads your thing. This is pre-YouTube. All this oh, stuff God. is pre-YouTube, pre-everything. You know, there was there was no, oh, I can just put it somewhere and people can get it for free and I don't have to pay. It was like if people get excited. So with Revision 3, they already had those mechanisms in place where they were they had, I think, like Cashfly, I think was the company that James sponsored Fly. them. No, Cashfly back in the day cool. because Cashfly was a company that would you would they would sell you bandwidth mm. right so you could be like oh. host your file and then you would pay them Jeez. and so they were like well we'll you can spot you know we'll sponsor the show and wow. then you can get your bandwidth could you free. imagine doing this and having to pay it's bad <clears throat> enough we do it for free oh god, god. and it, and the worst part is as you become success because the other thing that was great about that time period i mean i guess great is the right word uh <laughs> unique about that time period was that there was no way to make money Right, and so it, there wasn't even a potential way to make money. Nobody was doing anything to make the money. Right, this is before iTunes had TV shows. This is before you could pay to buy a TV show. So there was no money whatsoever. And what was happening was, as you would become successful, it was this horrible catch twenty two because you would become successful, you know. And at the time, we were getting hundreds of thousands of downloads a, uh, uh, a week. Which at the time was like millions now because there wasn't a YouTube and people were like, oh, a thing. Um, uh, but uh, but the problem was we were paying thousands of dollars a month because we were popular. And it was like, well, but there's no way for us to make thousands of dollars a month yet. And uh, and so we just we were just hardcore like uh, Prager actually was one of the guys. Uh, my buddy David Prager was one of the guys that was just like at it, calling everybody, calling, like just give us a dollar. Like we don't even care. And, you know, those guys really helped sort of form the concepts of what we were able to do. And and by the end, you know, we had massive sponsors. I mean, we were doing live shows for like 4,000 people that had, you know, Ford. And we went, went to Michelob sent us out to or um, I think it was Michelob. I'll have to look at the thing. Miller or something. Anyway, one big, you know, beer company sent us out to their St. Louis brewery, and we did a show there at their brewery. And yeah, I like, love the live show for Dick Nation, because it's still just two, you two guys with your laptops. Well, we just said. you're on a stage. And we literally, <laughs> and that, that was the craziest thing, because I remember the first time, we were like, we should do this live, because we d- had a live studio with the screensavers, and there's nothing like having a live audience. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, you can't, yeah. you can't get that We used to vibe. do this live. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, when 40, 50 people show up in Hollywood, it was better to just hit the airwaves with it. So. Yeah, but still, even that, because what we did was when we first did our first live show for Dignation, I can't remember, I think it was probably a year in, uh, maybe a little bit longer than a year in, and we were like, you know what, let's just say we're in San Francisco, because I was flying, was flying up and back, because uh, they moved from, they started all that stuff, Dig was founded here, Revision 3 was founded here, and then they all moved up to San Francisco, so I was actually flying back up there to go, go to work, you know what I mean? And do, of course the work was I fly off, get off the plane, go get drunk with my friends, hang out, sounds crash on their couch and awful. fly back. That sounds uh, um, but, uh, uh, but we were like, let's do a show. We'll do it here in San Francisco. A lot of our fans are here because it's very nerdy tech, especially at the time. It was mm-hmm. like 2005, you know, 2006. And uh, it was at this place called the Beach Chalet in San Francisco. Uh, and I remember driving up with Kevin and Kevin turned to me as we were sort of parking and he goes, I just hope somebody shows up. Like I know it's not going to be packed, but I just hope a person shows up. Like we're, I'm going to feel like the biggest asshole if we get in there and nobody, like everybody's just there having dinner because it's a restaurant and we only had like a little section of it. It was like people are just having dinner, and we showed up and it was jam packed with people. And we were like, oh my god, this is crazy. We had such a great time, blah blah blah. And I will say, I know everybody's like, oh well, you know, Saturday Night Live did a spoof on us. We did our live show at at Beach LA and it was so janky. Like we didn't know what was happening. Like we had no we you know, we thought the lavaliers were going to work with the PA system it didn't. So we had this like mic stand but it wasn't even really a mic stand. So we tied a cloth napkin onto a mic onto a thing. I mean, it was just like jank 
key. <laughs> and like two weeks later, somebody sends me this thing that was like, did you see Saturday Night Live? And I was like, no, what, no I don't watch Saturday Night Live, you know. Uh, haven't for a while because my people aren't on it anymore. I'm totally Which right Which I'm there sure is everybody. Anyway. Every yeah. generation has I their guess. Saturday Night Live. Uh, but they did a podcast sketch and it literally looks exactly like Kevin and I from Dignation. <laughs> I mean, they have, I can't remember, but it was like spiky hair blonde guy with glasses and like the black hair guy was like some, I can't even did remember. Did Jimmy Fallon do that? It, I didn't know. It definitely wasn't Jimmy Fallon because I would have called him on it because we had him on the show. Oh, okay. And if it was him, I would have been like, was it us? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, so we did that. We were, we just really lucked out. So we did that for seven and a half years. We Wait, stopped. Well, just because of time cut to what you're doing. Nowadays. Yes. Yes. That is a what, good, what that's a good plug? cut. Um, I got a couple things going on. I'm shooting m- uh, more stuff. I have, um, I'm actually shooting a short film this summer for Roddenberry Entertainment, which oh, I'm very excited oh, about. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take that uh, as a cue here. Hang on one second. Oh. Damage report. There are 63 oh. damage wounds. Five critical. One by yes. Would you like me to lose some? This is exciting. Mm-hmm. Would you like me to lose some? No, that's all. Oh. You have suffered a number of injuries in the accident. You have one cracked rib and rib and suffered a head injury resulting in loss of consciousness. Okay, so I need oh. to uh, yes. say that was from something called Voltron the End, a short that you Correct. Uh, shot. Now, I can't go forever on this, Adam. All right, all right, all right. Look, Resident Voltron. No, no, no. Oh, there's I a know. Voltron aficionado, aficionado in the room. Adam. We will like discuss this on this. off the air, but I just want to <laughs> say... That uh, I was an early adopter of Dignation as well because podcasting oh, nice. came about. The, the exciting thing was I grew up as a talk radio fan in Cincinnati. We had a really good talk radio station. Yeah. Morning tonight, including the Reds game, they had a really good lineup, a really listenable, and you just left that on all day long, and it was great talk, and it was sort yeah. of stuff like, you know, did you see this traffic lights out, or why don't they fix this bridge, or whatever? And then just it, as though Congress passed an act. At all radio, all talk radio had to be conservative talk, and I just lost my talk radio. I was like, I can't, I can't listen Ow. to this because it just wasn't about anything but politics and yeah. really neener neener politics too. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, you know, everyone's got to bug up their ass about whatever. And so then when podcasting about, it, I was like, wait, talk radio is uh, people are talking yeah. again about something other than whatever politics. these yeah. stupid liberals and their stupid liberals, you know? And it's like. <laughs> And, and, and it's and so anyway. So I was an early adopter to podcast in general because finally talk. But anyway, but but I, I just wanted to say. I, so I, I was excited to hear that you were coming on the show. Oh, nice sort of stuff. But then when Paul dropped the V word, Voltron, oh. that, you, that you had made a Voltron Bam. short in my garage, in his garage, <laughs> with. A, a, a red lion in space, mm. and and it and it looks like a real. I, I'm a huge Voltron and fan. My buddy made that. That's a three and a half foot custom model that he made for me. Amazing. It actually uh, is a practical model. All right, we're gonna keep the conversation to one minute. I will say it's available on YouTube. Yeah, 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 actually, you can go it's to Voltron. Three and, a half yeah, and you can go to minutes. VoltronShort.com. I put that up there because I had I was doing some promo thing and I was like, I want a way to get there, people to get there. Now, the thi- now we we can discuss briefly the, the development of Voltron. Okay, so Transformers <laughs> makes money, and all of a sudden everybody wants to make Voltron. But I cannot believe the development concepts that I'm hearing. That Voltron comes to New York in a future dystopian New York. There is a property with knights and princesses and legacies and a planet under yes. war and being attacked. And five valiant people who do not want to be a part of this war are thrust into a responsibility <laughs> as manning these legendary creatures who are going to bring peace to the galaxy and nobody thinks that's an idea they want to take voltron and put it in new york they want to i just just, it's i I can't believe there is such a good idea there and all the development has never happened upon the idea the basic idea yeah Yeah, right let's (laughs) just loop back around and do the idea yeah why don't you do the idea it's like it's like the most radical thing like everybody's like god what's marvel doing right they're just doing the idea (laughs) You people, are, it's, uh, they've set their westerns in the west with people with guns. That's what they decided to do. It's not radical. You all are just cannot see what you're doing. I don't. It's so yeah. well, one year I went to Comic Con to see uh, to well to see everything, but I went to a Penn and Teller Q and A, and I got there early to get a seat, and I saw about a half hour of the Voltron panel, and that was everyone's everyone was screaming for a movie. <sighs> what what year was this? Had two I'm assuming it wasn't the year that they aired that because I was on the Voltron panel. No, the it was year not that the came year. Out. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. actually showed that at the Voltron oh, cool. panel on Oh, Kong. that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Yeah, did you, have you ever met with anybody about oh, yeah. development? Oh, yeah. You have? Yes, yes. Are there good ideas out there? Is somebody going to nail yes. this or what? Uh, yes, there's some. Are you still involved? There's some stuff. Right. There's some stuff. Ah, We're going to talk exciting. after the show. I'll send, you, I'll send you a little something Thank that you. I wrote. That Thank you. Enjoy Thank reading. you. That was very I, I, good, I, I, Adam. I would very much like, yes. And now I, I, from I, days of long ago. Oh yes. From uncharted regions of the universe. Uncharted. Listen comes to the mythology. A comes a legend. The legend of Voltron. The legend of Voltron. Defender of the universe. This is only in the first episode. Yep. <laughs> Love by good. After that, it's not a legend anymore. Well, any good As loves that robot. Legend grew. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Peace. As Voltron's the legend galaxy. grew, pe- this this what is this plot at the beginning of it is always the most disconcerting the thing. No, but the by the way, alliance that you will never see for the rest of the show was formed. Yeah, well, this is all this stuff. This is the crazy thing was, <laughs> but it makes good mythology if you so, were to use that to make. And a this movie. is what happened was when I decided I was like, you know what, I want to do because there's a bunch of '80s properties that I'm like, God, I want to do mask. Like, mask. That is literally on the in top a of my with list. Mask, you talk to me beforehand. Totally. Yeah. I almost. I, I literally it down, I pitched it in the shower. I literally. I, nail it I literally time. almost shot. I just pitched Heather with a mask uh, <laughs> short. I was like, I was like, babe, we'll do a mask <laughs> short. There you go, yeah. I was like, we'll do a mask short, and then we'll get my buddy to make the mask. We'll put you in a car and put it. It's like it'd be awesome. Uh, uh, working but, overtime, <laughs> fighting crime. Oh uh, yeah, fighting crime. I don't know. Fighting long- crime. <laughs> I just Thank want you, you to, Thank at some point, have the Boubet sisters be performing in the background. That's all Done. I need. Boubet sisters That's Done. right. Of the mask well, Heather, w- Heather was the voice of the uh, the Red Lion. Heather Stewart Alex. Oh, yes, wow, my really? Yes. Friend, friend of the show. Yes. Friend of the show. She's in everything. She's, been she's on, awesome. She's awesome. She was on uh, the show at Christmas was one of the Boubet sisters. Oh, that's oh, right. That, yes. mm-hmm. That's totally right. Ruby Guy's holiday special. Yeah, I got, I, you'll get totally crazy about this. So but I did this. The Voltron guys called, and they were like, what is this? Uh, Let's co- come awesome. meet. I met with all the guys making the movie, talked to a whole bunch of stuff, but then they brought me in when they were doing, there was like a the Xbox Live, no, there's an oh. Xbox Live video game that they had that came out a little bit ago. Oh, really? Uh, I right, I don't think anybody heard about it. it. Uh, but they invited me to sort of like the launch party, and I literally met the entire voice cast. Oh, wow. And they were fantastic, and Princess uh, Princess uh, Allura I literally was like, she had this honest question to me, because I guess before I got there, they like... Everybody was like around the table, like, yay, Voltron, this is great, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, you know what? Just to show you how, like, people still love Voltron, let me play you this short film. Uh-huh. So they had all seen it right before I got there. <laughs> and she asked me, she said, it was so sweet. She goes, when you watch Voltron now, do you still think that it's good? And she had this, like, on it, because she was like, I just, you know, I mean, I just feel like maybe it lo- doesn't look that, you know what I mean? And, of course, no offense, it's really crap when you watch it now. It's sort of like, and so, but the it's answer that nostalgia. I have, <laughs> it is, and the answer that I had, which is the honest answer, is when I remember watching Voltron as a kid, mm-hmm. I saw the short film. Mm. Like, the way I felt, I thought I was watching what I ended up making. And so that's why I wanted to make it because I wanted to be like, this is what my adult brain remembers my child brain feeling about this property. And that was enough. She was like, oh, that's so sweet. And, and by like, the way, and I was like, yeah, no, kudos like, in the short bad. film because I don't think anybody, and I wasn't expecting it, but I, I don't think anybody listening would expect when you actually go see it, it is a prequel to the entire cartoon. Yeah. It is the it is the lions before yeah. the, the space explorers this was gonna be land. This was going to be my opening scene to the my version of the live action Voltron movie which is flash forward and King Zarkon has taken over Earth it's all yeah. bad and then there's a r- rumors that there might be a backup Voltron mm. but that's not the movie that's going to happen. Oh, well, let's go t- t- from... Uh, wow. Wait, do we have any... T- I don't think we have time for what did you see this week, but real quick, no. what did you see this week? Uh, we saw the greatest double feature, uh, Stripes really and good. Groundhog Day. So nice. Great. On Easter, he has At risen... At the New Beverly, the greatest movie mm-hmm. theater yeah. on Earth. So good. Tribute to Harold Ramis. Yeah, they Such did the right thing. Such a hoot. Here. I walked that's out, cool. my face hurt from smiling. Uh, yeah. You I forget just, how great Groundhog Day is if you haven't seen it in a long time, because so it's about 21 years angry. old now. Yeah. Don't drive angry. Yeah, see it. Angry. See it immediately. Someone I, said in a review, it is the it is the only thing you could say is a Frank Capra film made in modern time. Like it's the only one you could oh, really say that's a Frank Capra film made in modern time. Interesting. Maybe there's others, but boy, that sure as hell is a Frank Capra movie. Yeah. So I just good. saw the way way back for the first time finally. Oh yeah. yeah. Was that was that good? Like, oh, loved it. Yeah. Oh, it was great. Yeah, it looks like Sam Rockwell is playing a Bill Murray character. Right? He takes he, the young kid under his wing for the summer. Kind of as a slacker where he oh, works. That's right. He I was looking. Throws off that. a bunch of uh, comedy he is, lines. But 
in but a, there's more. Yeah, in, in a sort of more... Yeah, in sort of like a, a little bit more of a, of, a, of a shield. Like, Bill Murray always owned that guy. Mm. He wasn't that guy because he was sort of putting on a pretense to sort of, pre- you know, you, oh, he didn't, that, that wasn't gonna, built up. We're going to dig into the Rockwell character in this movie. You're well, yeah? no, I don't, oh. I don't know, but you just get that feeling that that's what, that's what that is. It's more of a sort of protective barrier mm. to this guy, whereas I feel like Murray just like, he yeah. was that yeah. guy. Rockwell puts it on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, I do want to see that film. Oh, no, it was, it was great. You, I like that. Is that on your Netflix and you're all that? Right? Yeah, it I, came out like last summer. It's I did be, uh, right? HBO. It just I, the thing is, it just popped on HBO, so I just video on demanded it on oh, yeah, HBO. So HBO that. Go, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's all get to uh, the uh, right. piece de resistance to Reese's Pieces. Karen's birthdays, <laughs> celebrating the birthdays of those who make the movies. Do you want me to move along? Take it away, Karen. All right. All right, let's start off our birthday week by wishing a happy birthday to the great Jack Nicholson, Ooh. who turns 77 but can play anywhere from a sexy devil to a sexy cop to a sexy astronaut to a sexy mental patient. Ah, uh, sounds like some of my favorite Chippendale strippers. Now, is this true, Karen? <laughs> yes. Is he sexy? One of those you know characters what? is old, not sexy, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the, he comes it's, off it's as old sexy. sexy. <laughs> there's just some, old sexy. There's just some, even when he was hitting on Jennifer Lawrence at the Academy Awards, it was hot. He's just sexy. He, he knows just, what to do with he himself. He comes across as sweaty now. He, <laughs> he is a, he is a, a human, lot less sexy, more sweaty. <laughs> yeah. He is a human Jack Nicholson impersonation, isn't well, he? Sometimes you hear funny. him and you're like, holy shit, he's nailing an impersonation. Yeah, he's oh. really putting on the Jack Nicholson <laughs> He's today. really putting it on. It's funny you should say that because I thought it might be fun this week with birthdays to have celebrity impersonation birthdays. So mm, I would really. like to hear you gentlemen. I'm going to open it up to you to do your favorite your best or your worst Jack Nicholson impersonation. Oh. So anybody have one to bring to the table? I think it's best if you keep it simple and just yes. say a couple of words, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> right? That was That's good. good. And bad. you didn't even do the eyebrow. You just and did you it. Kinda, but you do kind of lean put your forward. Head, yeah, you put your head Yeah, but you got to do, like for me, it's always, uh, yeah. um, <clears throat> let me see, ready? <clears throat> Masked freak terrorizes. <laughs> Wait till they get a load of me. That, that, that was hit of good. East, hit of Batman. Eastwood there too. And, and yeah, a little, little hit of, of Eastwood. Yeah, little Harrison Ford. Yeah, a little Harrison end. Ford. Yeah, that's good. All right, Lee, let's go. You do believe that I'm here to help you? You understand that? That was good. He right? used the oh. Cause marker because he, he has a cigar in cigar? his mouth. He said, "I'm here to help you in any way I can." And uh, <laughs> a few good men. A few good men. Of course, a few good men. He's got the cigar in his mouth. It's hard to it's hard to do it because you feel like you want to slip into uh, Al Pacino from Scent of a Woman. <laughs> right. You're like that was Jack Nicholson, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. I want to okay. try the Werner Herzog. Okay. Uh, you must never li- listen to this. Is Jack Nicholson? <laughs> you must never listen to this. I don't do it. That's Bill Clinton. That was Bill Clinton. That was Bill Clinton. Clinton. I Give him your cigar. <laughs> We're not good at this. Uh, here's Come something. <laughs> We're not good at this. Let's do more. No, here's, yeah, a, okay. <laughs> here's something kind of fun. Do um, th- this is just some a little thing I found when I was doing my research on the interwebs. Danny DeVito is a childhood friend of his. As a matter of fact, Nicholson's relatives and Danny DeVito's relatives ran a hair salon together, which I find is ironic Whoa. considering neither of them have very much hair. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on in our birthdays and wish a happy birthday to another bundle of laughs, Al Pacino. Oh, speaking who, of which. Right? Who turns 73, but can play anywhere from an entire... <laughs> <laughs> he can this play... Is just, yours is just Bill Clinton doing any of Anybody. He is turned 73, but he can play anywhere from intense to fucking intense. Amazing. So here's Hoo-ha. something kind of fun. I found a list Hoo-ha. of movies... That he Ooh-ha. was originally going to be cast in, but he turned down. Amazing. So what I would like to do is put that out there to you and have you do your favorite Al Pacino impersonation of the movie yeah. he could have been good. in. Oh, we'll good. start easy. We're going to start with uh, Pretty Woman. He was going to play Richard Gere's part. Does anyone want to do their Al Pacino as Richard Gere's? I don't know Gears. a single line How that much Richard do you Gere charge said. An hour? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually just Bill Clinton, not Bill even Clinton doing actually. a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's just a quote. It doesn't have to be a line. It just, <laughs> it just that's him interviewing be, interns. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an actual quote. It just can be inspired by true events. Wait a second. Well, here's the thing. I can't have you touch me anyway. I can't kiss. Can't kiss. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he wanted her to touch him in every way, yeah, except for the kissing. 
All right, let's do another one. Let's do Misery, the lead role that James Caan eventually got. Al Pacino was supposed to be... Uh, that might have been. Tie the that man to a bed and see what he says. Anybody? <laughs> What's with my ankles? <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> what an ass! <laughs> Does anybody do young Pacino anymore? Well, like, let's... Let me watch. tell you something, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't put the wood between my legs. Yeah, I don't know. All yeah. right, let's <laughs> try... Don't put the, the wood, wood between, between my, my feet. It's, and I don't, I don't know if I never noticed this until Stephen Lewis, uh, the movie guy from a couple weeks ago, pointed out that Al Pacino was a completely different actor until he played Big Boy Caprice in Dick Tracy, and then he was that guy. Yeah. Ever <laughs> That's says funny. Oh, That's man, really Big funny. Boy Caprice. Let me throw this out there. It, it makes sense to me. Lenny Bruce. He turned down Lenny Bruce. Anybody want? Who was he going to play in that? He was going to play Lenny Bruce. <laughs> Weird. Can you Thankfully. say, can you say two, is, two is a preposition and to come is a verb? Two is a preposition, come is a verb. Say that is Al Pacino. Two is a preposition. <laughs> to come is a verb. Paul, can you give us a, a little Listen axle? Listen to me. Oh, you yes? cunt. You fuck. <laughs> I'm just throwing Glengarry. I, I, I love I the nothing. young Al Pacino. Nobody does young Al Pacino. That is actually brilliant. Yeah. I love that. All right. Also, Axel F. He don't, was originally cast don't, as don't Axel go F. Against, don't go against the family, Kay. No, do, do Axel I need to do Axel outside Axel the door. Super Cop. Do Axel the Super Cop. That two Super Cop line. They were they was buying the Super Cop story. Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> banana in the tail. You fell for the banana. <laughs> 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 Lastly, <laughs> let's wish a happy birthday to another intense, intimidating, tough as nails actress, Renee Zellweger, who turns 44 but can play anywhere from 110 pounds to 140 pounds. <gasps> range. That's mm, called range. That's what I'm talking. Because in, in Bridget Jones, it's all she did is kept talking about how fat she was, and I think she got up to 140 pounds. Brave woman. Anyway, brave, brave, brave. I was just brave curious. Woman. The Lena Dunham of her time. Of course. <laughs> I know, right? I went to some reputable websites and one blogger reported, because I was curious for you, Lee, if Thank she you. was ever naked <gasps> on screen. Is this true or false? Well, I, I really... What's the reputable site? I went Mr. Skin.com? <laughs> Mr. Skin didn't have was it anything. Mr. PG, was it? That guy's full of shit. This, I just had to quote this guy because it wasn't Mr. Skin, so it's even less Creepy reputable. Here creepier a blog reported that she was not naked in anything but in chicago and i quote the sheer gown that she wore showed her under the bus line you could see through it we briefly see her butt as she twirls we briefly see that her bush is unshaven <laughs> and has dark hair oh my god yes Brief briefly briefly and this one's even better another source says that in love and a 45 she spends half the movie in a white see-through panty, and we see a lot of her pubic hair. In a scene when she opens her legs so wide you can see her, her vagina, you need to pause at the right moment. Do I? And by the way, I said pubic hair because I fixed it. He wrote public hair. I hope he doesn't uh, live. No, that so, was it. All of the hair that's public is on her. Yeah, once it's on VHS, it's public. Yeah, it's that's public. public hair. But if you pause just at Such the right the moment, site. you yeah. will be able to see there. He doesn't and live within 200 yards of an elementary school, does he? <laughs> I said reputable. Right? Oh, okay. yes. yeah. Or Renee Zellweger. Or Renee Zellweger. And of course, Lee, you know how much I love to hear celebrities sing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People ask that. me, tell me two things about yes. Karen Volpe. I say, she hates it when you chew with your mouth open. Sure. And <laughs> she loves to hear celebrities sing. That's right. And so today, of course, we're going to listen to a little Renee Zellweger. And she's going to sing for us Roxy from Chicago. <gasps> This is uh, not quite as surprising as some of the choices you've made for the women, but yeah, this is good. I wanted one more upbeat. She was in a movie recently where she played a country singer or something. It was very depressing. Country song, Strong Three. Yes. Yeah. Empire Records. Oh, that Jamie. was fun. That's true. Jamie, you almost went a whole show without dropping oh. some knowledge on us. <laughs> the last minute. She's been screaming knowledge is at us the whole time. in Empire Records? Oh, yeah. Okay, I've never oh. seen that movie. That oh, that was my introduction to her. Yeah, that was her big, like, welcome to the world, I'm hot. Cute. And cute. here's my crotch with my hair, apparently. With her, with my public hair. Her public, her public hair is apparently very dark. I just watched See? Chicago again recently. All right, everybody. Hey, that wraps another movie showcast. Woo! Follow us on Twitter at The Movie Guys, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Movie Guys, as well as on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Paul, can you do Vine, some of that Instagram. as Al Pacino? Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little thing called Instagram. <laughs> Get on there. You know, put your pictures up yes. on that thing. We got, we're on there. Um, thanks to Alex Albrecht. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Uh, thanks also to Jamie Clark Yelvington for watching the board hey. during the show. Yay. 
providing corrections so we don't have to do retractions and every week. And winking at me when I make Sherlock references. Ah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> See the, the sting thing that you're going. See what happens uh, when you're not here. So it's good to have you back. And yes. Steve Scholes for his writing contributions to the show every week. Bye, and remember, Steve. you can always find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Thanks for listening. Woo! Quiet fart. <laughs> Play the quiet fart. Play the quiet fart. Play it out with a nice quiet fart. <laughs> <laughs>